Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the User of Bricks channel. Uh, today we are going over a topic many people have wanted to see in M Creator. That topic would be timers. Timers in M Creator or in Minecraft in general have to run off of each tick, uh, either increasing a number or decreasing a number. Um, so, yeah, those are the two types of timers there are. You can have a timer that starts at zero and goes up to a certain number where a procedure is uh, activated, or you could have a timer that starts at a certain number and goes down till zero or possibly below zero. Uh, today we will be creating a procedure that starts, or I should say a timer that is starts when a player joins the world, and then will end at an arbitrary uh, number. Uh, so, yeah. So let's get into actually uh, starting the timer. So timers, you can you have to use variables to to do, but you do not use uh, local variables as they reset every time the uh, procedure is run, and you can't access them in another procedure. Uh, another way of variables that you can do this is a global variable. Uh, but then that oftentimes uh, messes, can mess some stuff up if there are mul is if it's a multiplayer uh, if it's a multiplayer uh, world. Uh, unless you know what you're doing with that, I would suggest sticking with NBT uh, variables. Uh, we will be using entity. NBT variables, but of course you can use really any NBT variable uh, as long as it's the uh, number variable. So to start out, we want to start our timer, which we will be using, as I said, the set entity data timer or number NBT tag and this will be called timer appropriately. This will set an NBT tag inside the player entity as that is the entity that is uh, given in the player joins world uh, event trigger. So we want let's set this to say 200. This proceed this timer if we uh, are going from uh, something to zero this is what we would want to do and this uh, this timer uh, will last about 10 seconds as uh, a tick is well this timer will be uh, re will change every tick meaning it will decrease every tick by one number. So at one tick after this would be 199, and then 198, and so on. But a tick is run 20 times a second. So if you want your timer to last one second, you would set this to 20. Alternatively, as I am going to do, I'm going to start this at zero. And we can save that. And then we will be creating another procedure to deal with uh, to deal with the uh, lowering, or sorry, in this case, rising of the number. So, timer procedure. Okay, in this procedure, 
I'm going to have this triggered by a uh, player tick update. So with this, you can set the uh, entity uh, NBT tag we set earlier. You can set that to, and that'll be the timer NBT tag. Uh, you can set this to, uh, to a number, so let's set it to the NBT tag minus one. So we want to get the NBT tag. We can change this zero to one. We want to go to math, and we want to get the subtract or sorry, not subtraction, addition. And we want that one to be over there. Now we are increasing the uh, timer tag by one. Let's just make sure that all of the NBT tags are all the same. Now they are. And that's effectively how you do a timer. Now this is in effect rather useless if you don't have something attached to it. So you can use if statements to say get if um, if uh, get entity data timer if it is equal to 200 for 10 seconds since the player joined the world. Uh, we can do that and then you can put literally whatever you want in here as long as your dependencies are don't exceed uh, what you're trying to put it on. So with the on player tick update uh, event trigger, we are given the entity, which is the player, the X, Y, and Z position of the player, and we are given anything to do with the world that the player is in. So, that is pretty much it. I know this has been a shorter video than else of uh, my the rest of my videos but it is necessary to be separate as m many people want to uh, do this kind of thing uh, and to reiterate uh, what I said before the number tag doesn't have to be on an entity it could be on uh, an item or a block and you just have to set where, where, what triggers the first uh, setting of the timer. Does it set it to zero? Does it set it to another number? Uh, does it increase or does it decrease? Um, yeah. For the decreasing ones, you probably want to, instead of doing what I have here, you will probably want to get an if statement and then uh, if then you'll want to get the uh, number tag and say if it is greater than zero which is what it would be if you're going from a number down to zero then you want it to uh, to do that. And then your if uh, something is equal to, you want to set that to zero, and then that is what your timer would be. Of course, you could put this to another number that's in between the number that the timer started at and zero, but you don't have to. You could also make this go to negative infinity, but that's up to your discretion. So, yeah, the, the NBT
tags, again, you have to have it on a tick update, whether that's a block tick update or a player in item tick update or the player tick update. Any of those things would work. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to get notified of when my future videos come out. And yeah, I'll see you next time. This has been the User of Bricks.